Gosse. I'm an Android developer at a, uh, a home automation and security company called Alarm.com. I've uh, been with the company since 2014 and I've worked as an Android developer. Uh, started as a junior developer, went through all the senior roles, and I'm currently leading a team of uh, four Android and four iOS engineers. And part of this talk, well, actually, this talk is motivated by um, the effect code reviews had on me throughout my career and each stage on, on my career. And this is the information that, that I want to share with you today. I divided the talk into, into four sections. I'll start by formally introducing code reviews, why they are useful, why you should be using them in your team if you are not already. Uh, then I'll focus on um, junior developers and pro fresh college graduates. How are they affected by, by code reviews? And then I'll talk about how team leads should use code reviews to train and scale their, their team, so to invest in their team. And finally, I'll, 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 I'll close the talk with some of the best practices that I use with my team uh, today. <clears throat> So let's jump straight straight to uh, straight in it. Um, what is a code review? I'll just I'll just read this definition because it's quite quite uh, quite good and explain what a code review is. It is an activity in which a developer, other than the author, examines a software deliverable for defects and improvement opportunities. Well, these are fancy words for um, code review being a process for catching bugs early in the development process. So the sooner you catch the bug, the faster, easier, and cheaper it is uh, to fix it. And second, code reviews are a way that uh, a way for you to make sure that the code that your engineer, engineers write follows company and industry standards to make sure that they write uh, scalable code, robust code, and code that's uh, that can easily be be tested. But code reviews are not just a tool for catching bugs early in the process and making sure your code follows standards. They're, they're, they can also be a powerful teaching tool and also a motivational tool if, if used properly. And we'll focus on that a little bit more throughout the presentation. That was the formal definition of code reviews. There's also a not so formal definition of code reviews that you can see here. Uh, for those of you that don't know what the Boy Scout rule is, it, pardon, it actually says that um, you should leave the campground in a much cleaner state than what you initially found it, so that the next set of campers can, you know, uh, find a clean spot to 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 camp. Code reviews are not new. They've been uh, in the industry for for some time, and I actually spent a couple of hours the other day trying to share some statistics with you about the, the history of code reviews. And um, here are some of the things that I that I found. This is this is a rare picture of the of the first code review. I am I'm not very religious, uh, but I think this is uh, Moses, Moses getting his Ten Commandments uh, reviewed. And uh, judging by the look on his face, he is not very happy about the comments that he's getting. And I was, I'm, I'm assuming he's going to spend a lot of time addressing those comments. Um, going back to a little bit newer, newer times, newer being 1969. Uh, on the left side, you can see a picture of uh, Margaret Hamilton, who was the lead software engineer of the Apollo mission. So, in simple words, she actually wrote the software of the aircraft that took the United States to, to the moon. And the interesting fact about this picture is that you can actually see the source code that took that software, the United States, uh, to the moon. So a couple, couple of interesting fa facts that I found were that um, they said that the source code was 65,000 lines. I'm not sure if those that huge stack of books looks like 65,000 lines of code. To me, it looks like 65 million, <laughs> or she is super super short. It's one of the two. Um, there were no files without comments, and uh, nearly uh, 
half of the code, half of the code had comments. So 30,000 lines of, uh, 30,000 30, lines of uh, source code could contain at least uh, one, one comment. And um, this software was um, reviewed by, by one person and approved by six people. And I want to remind you that this is 1969, where probably monitors are expensive. So I, I wonder how they actually reviewed this, this stack of books. Um, maybe maybe kind of like this. I think this is the, the only way, <laughs> the only way that comes to my mind. But I'm not really sure how they reviewed it. Uh, the source code is currently available on, on GitHub. Whatever they did, they did. But I spent a couple of hours looking at the source code uh, the other night. And um, I'm going to share some some interesting facts that, that, that I found from, from the source code. Well, first and foremost, readability, uh, the code was very readable, right? And when you are supposed to review that huge stack of books, you better write code that's, that, that's readable. And that's exactly what these guys did. And I noticed uh, that there were some interesting comments. Well, there were a lot of comments in, in, the, in the source code, but uh, a couple of comments stood out for me. There was one function who had uh, temporary. I hope, I hope, I hope. Well, <laughs> obviously, the code that they wrote was not temporary. So whenever you write code, keep that in mind that there's nothing, there's no code that's, that's temporary as long as it is, it is merged. merged. Um, the other co funny comment that I saw was uh, burn, baby, burn. And uh, this was this comment was put on the function that was starting the, the main ignition engine. So whenever the rocket explodes, that's what happens. So obviously, humor is essential for landing people on the moon, right? And the most important thing that I want to point out here, this was 1969, a billion dollar worth uh, project. Uh, they were uh, trying to win the space race, the stakes were high, but these people um, spent a lot of time doing code reviews. So the code reviews review process is essential in any type of software development um, process. Even though the code review process is super essential, and especially if your application is processing transactions you are required by law, at least in the United States, to have some sort of a po formal code review process. It doesn't have to be an official code review process that we uh, all know on, on GitHub. Any kind of uh, code review process is fine. But you'll find, even though code reviews are, are, are a must, you'll find some small startups overlooking the code review process. And, I'm actually working on a side project where I'm the only engineer, so I cannot really get anybody to, to look at my, my code. But if my application becomes the new Facebook or, or Google, then I'll end up paying technical debt that I never intended to pay. So the sooner you start reviewing, the, the better it is and the better the software will be. Now that we see why code reviews are important, I actually want to talk a little bit about those junior developers, those fresh college graduates, and how they look at code reviews. How are they affected by, by code reviews? So what can we say about a fresh college graduate? Well, first of all, they're super excited. They spent four years in college, studying hard, paying a ton of money to go to college, maybe even having a side job. And finally, after four years, they're ready to cash in their college degree. They've landed this cool job with great, awesome perks. And it's time for them to save the world one line of code at the time. That's awesome, but they are very inexperienced. They have never faced code reviews before in, the, in their life. The closest thing that they've gotten to code review is basically having their uh, final year project uh, graded. And that's very different uh, from a code review. They also might not consider the, all the use cases whenever they write code. They might not write the best code. They just solve the problem without think, thinking about scalability and, and testing. 
And uh, furthermore, no, no school teaches you about work ethics and no school teaches you about code reviews. So when these people join the industry, they're, they're very new. And the way they receive uh, feedback is very important for them. Because if they receive feedback in a negative way, their overall well-being will be affected. A lot of people tie their self-worth to their work. So, and especially these, these guys were uh, facing this new environment. So, even though uh, these people are inexperienced, you'll find them on some occasions writing a lot more code than, than senior developers. And uh, you might ask, why is that? Uh, the reason being is that you know senior developers still still write code, but um, not as much as the juniors because they spend a lot of time reviewing code, a lot of time um, planning, fighting with product and UX on on the. But as a senior developer, it is your job to use code reviews to train these young developers, young soldiers, to write code that will, let me say, win awards in some, some way, right? That will be scalable, testable, and, 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 and good. So I assume a lot of you use co code reviews as a, as, a, as a teaching tool. Uh, you know, I assign them to people so that they can get familiar with, with the code base. But if you, if you use uh, code reviews in, in a wrong way, they can have a negative effect on, on, on people. And I actually want to walk you through an example uh, that uh, happened to me around a decade ago. I was a fresh college graduate and I joined this startup and this startup had 10 people. Two of them were senior developers. They actually started the company. And one of them, I'm gonna call him the bad developer uh, because of his code reviews, I started hating my job and I almost quit my job. And the other developer, I'm going to call him the, the good code reviewer. And he's actually the reason why I'm standing here talking to you today. If not for him, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, I would have probably quit the job and uh, change careers, to be honest with you. So I joined this startup. <clears throat> After uh, a week or two of onboarding, I get a task assigned to, to me and I start working on the task. Uh, you know, I, I, I created a pull request and I assigned it to one of the developers. In this case, it was the, the bad developer. So a few more days pass and, um, you know, I get a feedback, I get some comments on the PR and uh, what I see re really scared, scared me. He literally destroyed me. There was not even one positive thing on, on the PR. And in some occasions, this might be okay if you've been in the industry for a long time, but what uh, the bad dev developer failed to realize was that this was my first baby. You know, I, I needed some, some positive feedback. It's my first time facing a code driven in a new, new company. So, that's not the only thing that he, he did wrong. He would frame in the PR, he would frame uh, commands, uh, he would frame feedback as, as commands. So instead of saying something like, um, can we change this line of code? He would say, you should change this because it doesn't work uh, properly or, or it's wrong. So even though his comments were, were in place, he was a very bad leader. I really felt like working under Gordon Ramsay. Uh, for those of you who don't know who, who Gordon Ramsay is, he is shown on, on the picture on the right. He, he's this excellent chef, but he's very arrogant. And the way that he phrases feedback is just so negative. And I would never love, I, I would never like to work under him, even though I'll learn a lot from him. And that's exactly how I felt uh, working under the, the, the bad senior developer. I took all he said personal. I tied my self-worth to my, my work. I felt like I was being judged, not my code. And I felt threatened. You know, I thought that I was gonna lose my lose my job. You know, I started questioning myself, can I even write code? You know, I was a great student. I spent four years in college, straight A's. Uh, like, what am I doing wrong? You know, I'm doing the best that I can. And also I started hating my job. 
you know, can this guy give me a break? I wake up early in the morning, stuck in traffic for an hour. I work hard, I do the best as I can. So long story short, it ended up in a catastrophe. Uh, I hated my job. We merged the PR, but the end result was that I avoided the bad developer by all, by all means. I didn't assign any PRs, I didn't communicate with him, which was probably not the best uh, thing, to be honest with you, now that I look at it in, in the retrospective. And I would actually like to ask you at the end of the talk, like, how would you behave in this situation? Like, uh, if this happened to you today, how would you react? Obviously, the thing that I did was not the best solution, but I didn't know any better at the time. So, like I said, I started avoiding him and I started assigning my uh, pull request to the, the good senior developer. And he did things quite, quite differently. Uh, he, like a couple of examples, he would like tie comments to, to principles. And this is very useful for a new junior developer because you can learn what a factory method is. You can learn what um, a design pattern is and how you can, how you can use it. So it's a great learning opportunity. And, you know, if he ties comments to principles, then you cannot really question the comments because that's, uh, you know, principles are well accepted standards, if I may say so like that. He, would use, he wouldn't use authority to resolve conflicts, uh, especially if, if a, a conflict had arised, he would ask for a third opinion. So that way he would create this uh, environment of inclusion and co collaboration. You know, so the, ma the majority of the vote wins as opposed to he's been there the longest and he knows best. Uh, he would also provide, you know, um, questions whenever he would phrase feedback as questions like, can we change this? Because the way that it's written right now, it's not very testable or, or, or scalable. And he would provide, um, you know, plenty, plenty of examples. Uh, and this is super helpful when you are straight out of college, because uh, you might not know what the best solution is. And if somebody guides you, it makes your life life easier. So how did I take all of this? Well, of course, I didn't take it personal. I, I realized that code reviews are are not a blame game. I realized that. Um, you know, I felt included just because he created this collaborative environment with where more than one person was participating in the in the review process. So I felt like the the team owns the code, not me. I felt like the work that I was doing was uh, addressed by the group to make it better, as opposed to me being judged personally. And I started loving my job. You know, I finally had this mentor from who I was able to learn, grow. He would challenge me to do things. So, you know, it, 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 it was great. You know, he used code reviews to make me grow and um, love what I do. Yeah, if um, I love I loved this quote by, by Isaac Newton, which actually, uh, explains why I'm here uh, talking to you guys. If not, if not for the good developer, I would probably quit my job and change careers. He really, he really used code reviews to uh, make me feel good as opposed to tell me what I, what I did wrong. And with that, I would like to finish this section and actually focus more on the good uh, senior developer. What did he do uh, right to make me love code reviews is supposed to help them. What did you uh, do to make me accept code reviews and help me use, use them as, 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 have them be my best friend, you know, use them as a, as, a, as a great teaching tool. So if you are a team lead of a fresh new college graduate, this section is, is for you. The good code reviewer had very three simple rules for, for, for success. People like praise, give them praise, which means if somebody does something well, acknowledge them, tell them they did good, tell everybody that, the, that their coworker did something well. This really boosts their morality and their, their spirit. Second, the code is owned by the team, not the individual. 
And third, love your developers, do not, do not trust them. I have more details for each of these three rules in the following slides. So let's start with the, with the first one. People like praise, give them praise. On this picture, uh, you can see my girlfriend and I uh, during Christmas. Uh, this was taken last year before, before COVID. And we were on our way to a restaurant to have dinner. This was the time when you can actually go to a restaurant and sit and, and have dinner. And, um, and the reason I put, put this picture here is because um, we went on, on, on a date. So imagine if the, if the date is a pull request. Imagine that my girlfriend is the author and I'm the, the reviewer. And further imagine that her outfit was being the, the new item here, the new code that was being uh, merged. How would she feel if I only po pointed out the shortcomings or the negative things in her outfit? How would she feel if I just said things like, what, what is wrong with, with her outfit? How, how would the date end? Well, this is probably the, the, the best case scenario. I can only imagine what the worst case scenario is. But what I'm trying to say is, if you only provide negative feedback and what people did wrong in their work, uh, that really hurts the author-reviewer relationship. The same way if I would only provide negative comments that would hurt the relationship between me and my, my girlfriend. With that, try to find at least one positive thing to say. And there's always something positive that you can say. You know, Thank you for changing this. Um, great job writing a unit test. Uh, this refactoring code looks so much better. Don't overdo it sometimes, because if you work with somebody for years, it kind of becomes silly to just say thank you because they made a change. It's their job. But if it is someone that's, that just joined the company or finished school, then a thank you can take you a long way. Second, the second rule, um, create a collaborative environment. The first thing that comes to my mind when somebody mentions President Obama is this picture of him, you know, pointing his index finger in the air and saying, yes, we can. Can you imagine um, how his campaign would end if he said, yes, you can? Well, obviously, he would not win the election because he, uh, by saying, yes, you can, he says that the responsibility is on the people and not on him as a leader to guide us through difficult, difficult times. So similarly, in your team, you should forget about the word you. There's no you, there's no I in team, there's the majority. There's We have the team, not the individual. Uh, if you, with that said, try to change uh, sentences like, can you change this line of code to can we change this line of code? The word we creates this collaborative uh, environment and sense of ownership. And in reality, the, the code is owned by, by the team, not by the individual. Because if the individual writes a code, applies for a new job, leaves the company, then the team will end up owning, quote, unquote, the crappy code that the individual wrote. So as part of the code review, make sure that make sure that the, your team knows that, you know, whatever they are writing is representing the group, not themselves. And finally, love your developers, but do not trust them. Whenever you are doing a code review, pull down the branch and verify the changes and also test them. Uh, use the ID and, and GitHub. I always use the ID and GitHub because the ID gives you things like uh, warnings, um, you know, uh, whether some function is, is not used, uh, is used or not. So there are things that you can see in the ID that you don't see in, 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 in GitHub. And especially ask to fix warnings because warnings, are, are time bombs. Uh, it's only a matter of time uh, before they become uh, errors. And 
I actually want to show you this super short video that uh, shows what happens when there's too much trust in, in, in one team. Um, it's very short. So there's too much uh, there's too much trust in this team, or <laughs> in other words, maybe there's too much laziness in in this team. Uh, I'm not sure if you could have heard uh, the, the the audio, but basically the junior developer was saying, "I have no idea what I'm doing," and he deleted the test and just submitted the the, the code. He deleted a failing test, and the senior developer also said, "I have no idea what I'm reviewing." And this is a very bad team. If your junior developer has no idea what they are doing, it is your job as a leader to make sure that they have an idea of what they are doing. It is your job to teach them and help them figure out what, what they are doing. This is the final section. Uh, I'll go through some of the best practices that, that I use uh, with my team, and hopefully they'll help you uh, when it comes to code reviews with, with your team. So I think code is better than words, especially with new, new people, uh, with fresh college graduates. If uh, I find myself writing a lengthy description, I make sure I provide a lot of comments, or even better, sometimes I create a branch off of the air branch that has the changes that I'm trying to, to suggest. That way, you know, we can review my uh, suggested changes in a different pull request. And if we agree on them, then all we need to do is just mer merge the code. And developers love this it's much easier for them to just copy and paste something or uh, click a button to merge the code. But make sure that if you do something like this, make sure that you write production-ready code or pseudocode, because sometimes you might do it quick and not write production-ready code, and they'll just copy and paste it and ask you to review it. And it's probably code that's not ready. It's not looking very, very good. If the code is better than before, approve it. This is somewhat a controversial rule. Well, I would say it's incomplete rather than controversial. I would say if the code is better than before, approve it, but only if you have a process in place that addresses technical debt. And this is exactly what we have with my team. We have a so-called maintenance week where we where each team member rotates on a weekly cadence so each team member spends a week not working on feature development or their regular tasks all they do is addressing technical debt and some bugs that nobody wants to to look at that way we can say stuff like hey this code is okay we can merge it now and maybe clean it up a little bit later well not clean it up but if we are being blocked or anything, we can still merge it and make it look nice uh, later in the development process. As a leader, uh, you should you should promote clarity. Vague comments are, are not help uh, anybody. Be clear what you want to be addressed in this PR. Be clear why you want it addressed. Say if there's something that can be addressed later as part of the maintenance week or technical depth. Uh, process that that you might have, say that you can do that. We can do, that. You can do that later. And if there's something nice to have, but not necessarily something that we we should 
have in this uh, pull request and indicate that this is ni nice to have. For instance, look at this example by, by SpongeBob. Probably can be changed to, and this is a real example, like what does he want me to do? Does he want me to, to change this? When does he want me to change this? It's not very clear here. The larger the request, the slower the, the review. Um, this example here, it's actually a real example. 64 files changed and 3,000 lines of code added. It took me days to find the courage to even look at this pull request. And it took me weeks to actually review it. So when it comes to pull requests, try to keep them as focused as possible and as small as possible. The longer the PR, the slower it is. Developers like to jokingly say uh, fewer lines of code, fewer bugs. <laughs> no lines of code, no bugs. So keep your PRs as small as possible. Patience is a virtue when it comes to hot fixes. Do not rush the review. Uh, I've noticed with new developers, it's only a matter of time before they break something in production. And usually they try to fix it as soon as possible and they try to rush you to do the review as soon as possible. Don't be rushed. It is your job as a leader to drop the ball down and calm the situation. If you do things fast, uh, mistakes happen when you do things fast. I know that production is broken. It can be broken for an hour, but make sure everything's fine because if you don't fix it, then it will take you even longer to fix it next time. Nobody has time for manual checks. Uh, as part of the, as part of your continuous integration, if you have a code style that you follow, integrate that in your CI, and make sure that the CI fails if the code format is not met. met. That way, you can ensure that uh, everybody writes the code in the same style, and also you do not, you only focus on the logic. You do not focus on the semantics of the code. You don't care that somebody didn't write a, a public a comment on a public function. Right? You just make sure that the function works as expected. Uh, we talked about a lot of things that you should do. Let's talk briefly about things that you should avoid. I think emojis are fun, but not in code reviews, not in pull requests. I think they're super distracting. Like. Is anybody even looking at the text that I have written on the left, or is everybody looking at the GIF? If you really must provide a GIF, I would say provide a link that takes you to a GIF. That way, it's not that much distractive. I think emojis are OK. I like emojis. And what I don't like is abbreviations. And if you see at the bottom, these are actual examples that, that I've seen in code reviews. So BAU, uh, I'm not sure what that means. So if you are an author of a pull request, uh, maybe you'll save a second or two to write uh, this abbreviation, but you'll probably waste my time because I have to look this up and see what, what you meant. Finally, this, this is the last uh, slide. I hope I encouraged some of the small teams to start doing code reviews. Um, I hope uh, team leads understand why Code reviews are, are useful and that they have to be used carefully to grow and train your team. For junior developers, code reviews are a godsend. They're your best friend. Embrace them, love them. And I hope you guys some I hope you guys like some of my best practices. And with that, uh, thank you for your time. Thanks for joining me and let me know if you have questions. Sure. There are several actually. First, thank you very much for your content. It was really insightful. I'm also a big fan of code reviews. And yeah, we do have really a lot of questions. I actually invite the people to upvote the questions that you want to be answered because we will not be able to answer all of them. We are also a bit out in the schedule, but I still want to, want to ask you one or two. So uh, the first one is uh, from Christian. He asks if uh, code review is often, often underestimated as a tech lead, how would you explain it is important to junior developers? 
Uh, I mean, I would include more than one person on the on the pull request, and maybe I would ask them, you know, to create this collaborative environment where more than one person is is involved. Uh, I would also not make it too official, you know, use language where you actually tell them, oh, this is great, uh, check this out. Um, so try, try to make it in a way, in, in quotes, uh, fun and also educational. And if, you know, if people feel that you are helping them with the code review and not um, judging them, then they'll embrace them and love the code reviews. Okay, thank you. So uh, the next is from Claudia JS, and uh, I think she asks um, this: "Feel threatened? A job is not good at all. It happens to me more than one, uh, more than once. What do you suggest about how to react in a positive way?" And thanks for your talk. Yeah, so th this this is quite quite interesting. So what what I did when I was uh, straight out of college in that situation what was wrong, and I, I often think like, what would I do now? If, if it... I feel like um, I feel like being honest is probably the the right way to go. If you maybe if it, if you feel threatened more than twice, you should probably talk to them and tell them that. You know their comments don't really help much. That you you feel, you actually feel threatened. Just j acknowledging that that you don't feel okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, maybe people. Uh, yeah, you got cut off for some seconds. Are you still able to hear me? Hello? Yeah, uh, seems like uh yeah are you are you back with us yes i am yeah sorry. amazing uh sorry there, there was like you know some connection issue um yeah we're actually out of time so uh really a lot of other questions so i invite you to stay in the chat and i invite you people to uh ping you in the general chat or dm you or find you <clears throat> on linkedin or twitter or like the social that you use. And uh, I think you can provide uh, valuable insights for everyone. Uh, and I also want to thank you again for, uh, for your time with us. And I want to invite everyone to join to the next session that is starting in two minutes. Uh, so thank you again. Bye. Thank you, guys.